Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Earth and Life Science which is all about unifying themes in the study of life. This will be the second quarter topic and week 1 to 2. This lesson is under the milk based. For the objectives, at the end of one hour session, 80% of the students are able to first is to identify the unifying themes of life, the second one is to design an experiment for life better understanding of the themes in the study of life, and the third one is to appreciate the unifying themes of life by making a concept map. The study of life in general is very wide, and to help us understand this vastness are what we call themes. Themes are distinct characteristics, pattern, and or quality. To help us understand better the study of life, we can look at themes individually and as a collective. In this way, we can easily digest the commonalities of those exhibiting life. The unifying themes in the study of life are an organization, information, energy, and matter, interaction, and evolution. The study of organism ranges from macro to micro or vice versa. This means that the study of life can be from the earth planet as a planet that can host life to the molecular level that comprises that life. The good thing, however, is that these large chunks of concept can be broken into smaller ones. The following are the levels of biological organization. The first level of biological organization is the molecules. This refers to chemical structure that compose of two or more atoms. The second one is the organelles. Organelles are parts of the cell which are responsible for the function and integrity. Some are membranes bound while others are not. Another level of biological organization is the cell. Cell is the basic working and structural unit of an organism. Different cells work in different organs. They are structured according to function. Organism can either be single-celled or multicellular in nature. Another level of biological organization is the tissue. Tissue are simply cells grouped together and performs a specialized function. Another level of biological organization is the organ. Organ is the body part or the part of an organism which is made up of group of tissues and organ functions specifically in the body. And another one is the organism. Organism refers to the individual living species and each thriving plant or animal is an organism. Another level of biological organization is the populations. This refers to all individuals of a species living in a specific area. Let us take, for example, a population of crabs living in the coastal area. Another level of biological organization is the communities. These are the variety of species inhabiting a specific area. An example would be a coastal community. In this community, we would expect to see a variety of animals and plant species that thrives in coastal area. Thus, a community is a combination of different population. Another level of biological organization is the ecosystem. This refers to the biotic and abiotic factors in an area. This includes not only the interaction between living things but also the interaction between the living and the non-living. 
Another level of biological organization is the biosphere. This consists of all the livable parts of the earth. By livable, we are referring to all the spaces which is inhabited by life. This includes the spaces in land, water, and air. In the field of biology, not only is organization important as it gives a compartmentalized focus on the different fields within biology, but more importantly, it gives us a glimpse of new characteristics that are not present in the previous hierarchy of organization. These characteristics were referred to as emergent properties are a cause of the interaction and position or arrangement of the previous organization's part. This allows for the subsequent organization to be more complex than the previous. Another theme to help us understand the study of biology is information. All living things have to deal with the transfer and expression of genetic information. Inside cells, chromosomes exist and inside chromosomes are genetic material in the form of DNA or deucyribonucleic acid. The structure of the DNA is responsible for its ability to store information. It is a double helix of strands of building blocks called the nucleotides. The following nucleotides are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And it is abbreviated as A, T, C, and G respectively. The different sequence of these four nucleotides account for the encoding of information in the DNA. The sequencing provides for a blueprint for most genes to make proteins. In turn, these proteins account for different functions in the body and in different organisms. Like for example, a single cell gene may specifically create a protein that will be able to break down a carbohydrate molecule, while a human gene may specify a protein to act as an antibody to help fight off infections. The protein production is controlled indirectly through another related molecule, the RNA. The RNA in this process serves as an intermediary. The nucleotide sequence along a gene is transcribed into mRNA, then translated into building blocks of protein called amino acids. The amino acids in this case is a link series after completed. They form a specific protein with a unique shape and function. This whole process where the information in a gene guides to create a cellular product is called a gene expression.